Africa is much more. Africa is about 60% of the world's renewable energy resources. Africa is about 40% of the world's mineral resources necessary for energy transition. Africa holds 65% of the world's uncultivated arable land that can be used for smart agriculture. Africa has the largest natural carbon sinks anywhere in the world. And much more importantly, Africa has the youngest population with the potential for the future to be the largest market. And we are doing everything to consolidate Africa into one market that we can profile with 1.4 billion people and a GDP of 3.5 trillion. That is the new narrative of our continent. We want to use our renewable energy to drive our industrialization. I want to contextualize for this meeting so that we all know that this is not talk, that this is not a story. This is real investment decisions and real investment opportunities. I will take this opportunity to announce some of the concluded investment opportunities in the renewable energy space so that investors who are sitting here, development partners who are sitting here, financial institutions who are sitting here can know that we have real investment opportunities and we are serious about using renewable energy and turning the existential threat that we face into real opportunities for industrialization, for investment, for job creation, and for development imperatives. We have come here to profile our assets, whether it is in the Sahel region, where my brother, the president of Mauritania, comes from. The renewable assets of solar in that part of the world are immense, and we want to use those resources for the growth of our continent. Whether it is uh, renewable assets in other parts of our country, whether it is renewable uh, hydro energy in Zambia, in Zimbabwe, these are assets that are available to us. Whether it is the huge Hinga Dam in uh, DRC and Congo that we can use to generate renewable energy, or the geo geothermal resources, wind, solar in East Africa, in Kenya, in Burundi, in Rwanda, in Tanzania. These are assets that are available to us as a continent, and we want to bring these assets onto the table so that we can leverage on these assets for industrialization of our continent to create jobs, to create opportunity, and to make sure that we even the scales on the development of our globe. And therefore, ladies and gentlemen, I invite you to this very important session where we will be discussing opportunities for industrialization opportunities for manufacturing, using the assets we have, using the gas resources that we have, how we can transition and use gas as a transition energy source. Those of us who have huge gas resources everywhere in Africa can have the opportunity to use these resources as a transition energy into uh, renewable energy as we move into the future. The second investment that I want to announce here is a 35 megawatt geothermal investment of $110 million by Globlec in geothermal energy, again in a place called Menengai, with an investment of $110 million. We have Mike Scholle here, who concluded that agreement this morning, and Edin Jiroge. Are they here in our midst? We can give them a round of applause. Right there. Can we give them another round of applause? Thank you very much. Again, real opportunity, real investment concluded in this COP27 as a precursor for what will be done in Nigeria, what will be done in Senegal, what will be done in um, Cote d'Ivoire, and in every other country, including Burundi in East Africa. I want to confirm here that we are already in discussion with Burundi. They have huge reserves of nickel. 
and we want to work with Burundi so that instead of exporting nickel as a raw material, we can see how we can collaborate, provide renewable energy so that we can process nickel in Burundi and be able to export finished products for manufacture of all the items that we want to manufacture in that space. Let me also make an announcement here, again, of real opportunity, real investment that have been concluded in this COP, so that when we say, as the continent of Africa, we are a continent of opportunity, we are actually laying bare those opportunities for the world to see, for the world to appreciate, and for the world to come along with us, because we have real investment that will change the course of history. And these are green investments that are in tandem with saving the planet. Indonesia's Patamina and UAE's Mazda jointly are investing in geothermal project. And phase one, they will be investing a billion dollars. And phase one will generate 300 megawatts of geothermal power. I don't know whether Mohammed Jamel Ramani is here or right here from Mazda. We have uh, Paul Ngugi of GDC. I don't know whether he's here. Right there. And then we have Julfi Hadi, President and Director CEO of Patamina from Indonesia. Right there. Can we have a round of applause for those gentlemen for concluding this investment of close to a billion dollars in renewable energy? that will generate energy that will go into electric motor vehicle manufacture, that will go into solar panel manufacture, and that will go into leather manufacture. Green leather, green solar panels, green EV motor vehicles. Let me also make uh, two more announcements. United Green and Kenya Development Corporation also investing in smart agriculture, 15,000 hectares of climate smart, high carbon sequestering precision agriculture, and broad, broad acre row cropping, an investment of 275 million US dollars in this uh, smart agriculture. You, you remember I told you Africa is home to 65% of uncultivated arable land. Do we have the people involved in this program? They are right here. Right there. Those are the great people who have concluded that program, $275 million of investment in smart agriculture. Let's round of applause for them. The conversation we are going to have in this meeting this afternoon is about investment opportunities, is about financing opportunities, and it's about access to market. Those are the three most important things we are going to have a conversation about, and it requires us to collaborate, to work together, to build a huge uh, consortium of collaborators. And we are inviting the rest of the world to look at Africa as a continent of opportunity. And we are packaging these opportunities, as I said, we are changing policies, we are aligning regulations, and we are providing incentives so that we can use our renewable energy to add value to our iron ore so that we can export green steel. We are using our renewable energy to process bauxite so that we can export green aluminum. We are using our renewable energy to, for smart agriculture so that we can have green agricultural products into the market. What is our ask of the rest of the world? That we have to engage in the business of reconfiguring, re-engineering a new international financial architecture that will make sure that we have adequate resources, we have concessional financing, we can de-risk our investments using globally accessible, affordable, and long tenure 
resources that will be made available as we have a conversation. And I am very happy that in this COP, finally, we are all agreed it is no longer about if, it is when we finally reform the international financial architecture so that it is fit for purpose, so that it serves the needs and the nuances of the current situation globally, especially in the global south. We've also agreed, finally, that we are going to have a conversation as to new revenue, new, um, uh, new interventions that will give us new sources of revenue for us to finance climate action. I am very happy that progress is now being made, even around loss and damage, that finally we have commitment of resources that will ensure that interventions that are necessary for loss and damage come into being. In our midst, we have an investment of $1.5 billion by Fortes Green geothermal plant that will be in Kenya by FFI. In our midst, we have Mark Hutchinson. I don't know whether he is in our midst. Mark Hutchinson. Mark Hutchinson is right there. The, uh, we have um, Ed Kalishik. Is he there? Uh, right there. We have Bruce Taffy, special advisor, right there. Those three gentlemen have just signed an agreement of $1.5 billion to invest in green hydrogen that is going to produce green ammonia in Kenya. A round of applause for them. I am talking about real opportunities for investment. And this is going to happen in every part of our continent. When I listened to the president of Mauritania, they are the largest exporters of iron ore. The Sahel is the region with the highest potential of renewable energy in the solar context. There is absolutely no reason why we cannot use solar energy from the Sahel region to process uh, iron ore from Mauritania and export green steel instead of iron ore from Mauritania. That is the, the direction we are going. I listened uh, very carefully also to uh, the president of Zambia. And it is again an opportunity for us. Nicole Cobalt Coba. Today, they are being exported as raw materials. There is absolutely no reason why using the hydro resources we have in DRC, in, in Zimbabwe, in Zambia, we cannot process the copper, the nickel, the cobalt, and be part of the value chain of manufacturing phones, manufacturing semiconductors, manufacturing all the items that currently are being used for manufacture, but we export our products as raw materials. EcoCloud, one of Africa's largest green data centers using geothermal steam, are setting up what will become Africa's largest data center with ICT load capacity of 60 megawatts. They are going to be spending $600 million in this project that will be 100% powered by green energy. In our Mideast, we have Amos Siwoy, Chief Executive. Is he here? We have Ribingale John Anthony, Consulting Engineer from uh, that space. I don't know whether he's here. And we have uh, Joseph Njenga, Chief Executive Officer. Are they here? Thank you very much. Those gentlemen are working on um, data centers that will be powered by green. Last, AMIA Africa from the UAE in collaboration with Geothermal Development Company 
involved in drilling and development of geothermal fields. Phase one investment to reach US dollars 800 million, anticipated 200 megawatts of geothermal power. In our midst, we have His Excellency Hussein Al Nawais, Chairman of Amer from UAE. Can we round of applause for that gentleman there? And Mr. Paul Ngogi, Chief Executive of GDC, is in the house. Thank you very much. Finally, the US-led green energy supply chain initiative of 568 million concessional facility that will be shared between Brazil, India, and Kenya. This facility is a competitive facility and on behalf of Africa, we intend to put our best foot forward so that we win this facility. It is a concessional uh, facility and we are willing to share with our other brothers in the continent on this facility of $568 million to unlock the potential of green energy around our continent. I did mention these investment opportunities that were concluded today in this COP as part of our work to confirm to the world that in Africa there are real opportunities for green investment. There are companies that are stepping forward even as we have a conversation of how to de-risk investment in our region. There are companies that are already stepping forward to invest in Africa because they see the tremendous potential, the tremendous opportunity, the tremendous business case that exists in our continent. I want to congratulate my colleagues, heads of state, the president of uh, Zambia for the many steps they have had to make to stabilize their country, President Tinubu here, who had had to make very difficult decisions to get rid of subsidies that were hurting their economies. We all have to make difficult decisions to get Africa moving. And I want to promise here that we will gather the courage to make sure that we make the right decisions so that Africa can march into the future as an equal partner of other regions of the world as we tackle the challenge of climate change and as we create opportunities for our young people so that our young people don't have to get into rickety boats to go to other destinations. We want to create jobs. We want to create opportunities in our continent so that our young people can enjoy working from their continent.